Here in the U.S., nearly two dozen pro-life leaders are asking the head of the Food and Drug Administration to remove the abortion pill Mifepristone from the U.S. market. In a letter to FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn, they urge him to exercise statutory authority to, quote, classify the abortion pill as an imminent hazard to the public health that poses a significant threat of danger. Abortion advocates have attempted to stop FDA regulations of the abortion pill regimen during the pandemic. Catherine Hadro, host of EWTN Pro-Life Weekly, joins me now to take a look at this and other pro-life issues in the news. Catherine, welcome back. Always good to see you. It's great to see you, Tracy. Thanks for having me. Well, the letter, letter goes on to talk about the harm this drug poses to women, something that I know you've covered quite a bit. Can we talk about that? Absolutely. The abortion pill is dangerous. And this letter does take a significant step because we've seen pro-life leaders in recent months call on the FDA to not loosen restrictions on the abortion pill. But now they're saying it's time to take it off the market. Here's the thing. During this pandemic, we've really seen the abortion industry push for the abortion pill in an unprecedented way. Um, they really are pushing for it and manipulating women because as you and I and we all know, there's a lot of fear and anxiety and uncertainty right now. And the abortion industry is really preying on women during this time in unplanned pregnancies to push the abortion pill. But the abortion pill, which is when women go home without medical supervision, take two pills, which end the life of their child, that poses some very serious and unique physical and psychological risks. So why now, when our healthcare industry is maxed out and taxed out, are we wanting to put women in this potentially risky situation that is not pro-woman? Well, Catherine, we've also been following efforts on Capitol Hill by some uh, Democratic lawmakers to undo longstanding pro-life legislation like the Hyde Amendment. What's your reaction to that? Yes, we are seeing, again, unprecedented pressure on the Hyde Amendment in recent months and really in recent years. Um, just recently, House Democrats have um, introduced an amendment to repeal the Hyde Amendment from this year's spending bill. Just as a reminder uh, to viewers, the Hyde Amendment is added on to the spending bill every year, and it bans the taxpayer funding of abortions through Medicaid reimbursements. Since it was introduced in 1976, it's long enjoyed bipartisan support. It's passed every single year, but now we're seeing a lot of pressure to repeal it and take it away, even from Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden, who has previously long supported the Hyde Amendment. Even he now is saying he would support repealing it. But we know that the Hyde Amendment has saved over 2.4 million lives and is worth defending and protecting and should not be a partisan issue, uh, which is why to give a little preview of EWTM Pro-Life Weekly tonight, this week's call to action is to urge your member of Congress to protect the Hyde Amendment, and viewers can do that simply by going to ProLifeWeekly.com. Well, Catherine, we don't have a lot of time left, but I want to talk about this quickly. Um, story that I know that you've been reporting on a lot, the move by Planned Parenthood to try and distance itself from its founder, Margaret Sanger, and her racist viewpoints. What do you make of the action, and what are you hearing from pro-life leaders about that? Well, I'll keep it brief. It's not so much an action as much of an admission that we've all long known that Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was a eugenicist who believed in population control and that people... Some people are, quote, unfit. And simply removing her name from a building is not enough. And pro-lifers, pro-life leaders tell me this is not enough because you cannot divorce an ideology from Planned Parenthood's business today because Sanger's belief that some babies are better off dead continues to live on in every Planned Parenthood abortion facility every day. It's not enough, but I hope more people are aware of Sanger's ideology. Well, Catherine, thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing more on this topic on your show tonight. And a reminder that you can watch EWTN Pro-Life Weekly Thursdays at 10 p.m. And for other airing times, visit EWTN.com.